Hey everyone, so today we're going to be discussing frequency distributions and how to apply them to numerical data sets. If a data set is numerical, it does not have the benefit of natural categories that qualitative data has. Therefore, we use intervals for our classes. In a typical frequency distribution for numerical data, the classes, frequencies, relative frequencies, and cumulative relative frequencies are all listed in the summary. Now to construct a frequency distribution for a continuous numerical data set, you would first need to choose a range of numbers that contains all the values in the data set. Then you want to divide this range into non-overlapping equal intervals. These are your classes or class intervals. The class boundaries are the endpoints of each class interval. Second, when assigning, when assigning observations to their in intervals, we utilize the left endpoint convention. When an observation is equal to an endpoint, it is assigned to the interval with that value as its lower endpoint. The purpose of this is to make sure that each observation is assigned to only one interval. Now, there should be between 5 to 20 intervals in the summary, and it's best to use nice rounded numbers such as 1 through 10, 10 through 20, 20 through 30, and so on and so forth. The next thing you want to do is determine the number of observations in each interval to determine the class frequency. After that, you calculate the relative frequency for each interval using the formula num the number of observations in the interval divided by the total number of observations in the data set. Finally, you want to determine the cumulative relative frequency for each class interval. This is done by adding the relative frequencies for the current interval and any preceding it. This column provides a running total for the relative frequencies, which should total up to 1, subject to rounding error. Now, why don't we take a look at an example? So in this example, we have a numerical data set with the numbers ranging from 78 all the way to 92. So we will construct are intervals that are equally spaced, so they'll each contain two numbers, 78 through 80, and then it'll be 80 through 82, 82 through 84, etc., etc., all the way to 92 through 94. So we can look at our data and determine the frequency for each interval, and that sums up to 40 total. And to find our relative frequency, we can insert the formula equals E106 divided by 40. And then we can just drag that down. And that will give us our total, all of our relative frequencies for each uh, interval. And then to calculate our cumulative relative frequencies, in this first cell we'll type 0 0.05 because that's the relative frequency of the first interval and then from there we can say equals g106 plus f107 and then from there, we can drag it down to get our complete total here. And after they're all added up, it comes out to 1, which is what we would hope for. So now we can graph this data. When you construct a histogram for this kind of data in Excel, you want to make sure you calculate the frequency manually because for some reason, Excel does not use the left endpoint convention so it won't assign uh, observations to their proper intervals so you have to do that by hand. But so let's make a chart for this data. What we'll have to do is we can go to the insert tab, scroll over to 
in different charts. You'll find this, the histogram chart right here. You want to click histogram. I'll insert a blank chart here for you. And then what you can do is up at the top here, you can click select data and that will bring you a pop-up and for your uh, for your vertical axis you are going to have the frequencies one second and that's going to be these values here of course click OK for that and then for your horizontal axis you'll add a new series and that will simply be your bin, which will be the left endpoints of your intervals. Click OK. Then now, after we've got that chart generated, we can right click on the horizontal axis and then select Format Axis from the pop-up, then we go over to the right side and it'll have your format access options. And under where it says bins, you wanna select by category. And that'll provide you with this chart. And then to make the bars more distinguishable, you can right click in the data set, then go down to format data series, click the on the right, click the paint button, paint bucket button. Uh, for your border, select solid line. And you can select the color to be whatever you want. I chose black. And that'll provide you with a clean, easy to read histogram chart. And then you can go through after that and add your access titles, et cetera, et cetera. Get it nice and presentable. So what kind of information can we derive from a histogram? Histograms can tell you about the shape, the center, and the variability of a distribution. It can also be helpful in identifying any outliers in the data set. Now something to note is that histograms shouldn't really be used to uh, make inferences. They're is kind of a representation of the data distribution only suggests certain characteristics. So looking at this chart, we can see that the distribution appears to be negatively skewed, which means there are more observations on the uh, upper tail than there are at the lower tail. Now to, an to estimate the center of distribution, for this histogram, we can uh, identify a value that's approximately half of the observations are below that number and half are above that number. So in this data set here, so somewhere between 86 and 90, we have a rough division of the data Half, on one, half of the observations on one side and half of the observations on the other. So we can say that 88 is our center of distribution. However, a number like 87 would also be acceptable in this situation, even 88, because it's more so just a rough estimate. But if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel by donating to our Patreon. Thank you.